So I'm going to have a little happy Christmas message at the bottom like that. So I'm planning this very, very gently. I'm not pressing very hard at all because I know I want to erase this. So that's roughly where the star is going to be. And we're going to want the pot to be sort of something like that, which then means that the tree is going to be something like that. But we want it sort of equidistant, so the same distance each side. So let's bring that there. And we'll have the pot something like that at the bottom. And we'll have the stem. And let's plan out the bauble so we can have a nice big bauble there. And then this one's going to be just over the edge. And it's much more of an ellipse. Then as we go up the tree, these want to get slightly smaller and then if they're not in the middle, they want to be squeezed slightly. We'll have another one like that, and then those will be going over the edge. And then again, these want to be slightly squeezed, getting slightly smaller all the time. And again, those are squished and getting smaller as you get up the tree. <laughs> And in fact, I think we're going to be decorating our tree on Saturday. And that's that whole performance and business of <laughs> getting the big. Oh, I think oh, I'm not sure. I think I just can have two like that. Getting the big um, decorations at the bottom and the smaller ones at the top and <laughs> organizing it. It's yeah. So here, I'm going to draw another circle inside like that. And we're going to have one line going up there, and one about like that, and about like that. So we can kind of draw into the middle there. If you want to draw perfect star with <laughs> compasses and things like that, I've done a video showing how to do that. So let's start inking in with the star at the top to about there and then that's going to come out and then I'm going to draw all these baubles so remember these ones on the edge there they're helping to create this sort of feeling of shape by being squished in like this and being um, being ellipses that are squished in. Uh, yeah, that's what happens when I'm trying to explain things. Whoops, make the little marks like that. So this wants to be pretty circular and these want to be fairly circular. That wants to be circular because that's head on. These are almost circular, but they are slightly squished. As you get the perspective of um, them coming around the side of the tree. And then we can follow through this line, stopping when you get to the baubles on the edge and continuing through like that. And of course you are allowed to turn the paper over to, 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 at an angle, if that's gonna make it easier. And when you're doing a slight curve or any curve, in fact, it's easier if you kind of use your wrist as the kind of fulcrum of a compass. You know, you remember the compasses you used at school? And then we'll bring this around like that. And then that's the trunk. And we'll draw an ellipse around there like that. And then that will come down. And again, that will come to there and then down. And then we'll want to have these lines just not quite meeting in the middle. 
and then we can bring the pot down there like that and join together with a curve at the bottom and I could have um, I could have I, I'm, I'm just having this magically floating on the top there like that <laughs> and then down here I'm gonna have it saying happy Christmas which is not easy to get nicely um, spread out. So if you draw it very gently in pencil, then that helps you to get the justification right. So it's sort of neatly across the page. I'm going to use a hairdryer to make sure this is absolutely dry before I erase the pencil lines. Don't rub too hard. As I say, you know, if you've don't press too hard in the first place because then it's really difficult to erase the lines but again don't rub too hard because then you'll be ripping up the surface of the paper which isn't so good either oh these are disgusting eraser I've got here which is <laughs> needs a bit of a clean I must have been doing some serious erasing of something else that looks pretty good to me I'm trying to erase that little mark I made earlier. This, this is the um, Winsor & Newton Cotman field set. It's very simple. I may have added and subtracted some colours. That yellow doesn't look original and the Naples yellow as well. That's not original. So I'm just going to um, put a bit of water in there. And what is that brush you are asking? <laughs> it's a Pentel Aquash brush, um, which now I, I've just got so used to using them now so that's what I generally use for everything now uh, the water is in the handle so you don't have to keep dipping and dabbing and putting it into pots and spilling the pot of water over I'm going to oh that's a bit got a bit of green on there I'm going to get a I'm getting a clean bit of kitchen towel and I'm going to brush squeezing slightly um, brush that clean and then I'm going to paint in the star. Get that nice and golden. I might even put some little flicks in there. So I'm holding this really vertically to get the, the point of the brush. Yeah, this is the broad tipped brush. It's the only one that I use and I think it's the only one you really need. Unless you're wanting painterly effects. But we're doing illustration, aren't we? So that's okay. Now we're going to want some green. So this is a sort of a sap green here. And really, I, I think when you come to, to painting, mixing is kind of the, the key to it. And you can take colours straight off the pan or the tube. They're never quite right somehow and, and sort of mixing <laughs> makes them just look so much better somehow. And now I'm just going to work my way down trying to be careful and going around all these baubles. I'm trying to do it fairly quickly so that I keep it nice and wet because I'm going to be wanting to drop some more colour into it in a wet on wet kind of thing. I might have to sort of start doing that halfway down, which is a bit of a risk. So I'm doing this sort of trying to get a nice even tone of colour. Uh, now you see I'm feeling I haven't mixed up quite enough. And this is going to be a different, it's going to be a bit darker, I think, now. So, oh, it is, isn't it? There we go. This is, <laughs> you really want to make sure you've mixed up enough before you start. Uh, let me get down to about here. Get those ones done. And what I want to do is to have some much stronger colour in the middle. And it's got very dry already, so this is kind of working it out. You can see when I get to it, it's down here. Now it's wet, and that's fine. So I'll dip it in there a little bit and come back. And so I want it to be sort of darker in the middle. 
And so now I'm just sort of pushing it about really. Just to get that little bit of um, extra tone so it's not just flat. So you get a bit of a feeling of the shape of the curvature of the whole thing supplied by the, the stronger colour just being dropped straight in there. And, you know, I, you know, some people are very particular. I've gone over the edges there, but that's because of the speed that I go. And I know some people will be going, oh, no, 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 you've gone over the edge. <laughs> and, and everybody's different. And, you know, some people like a really loose style. In which case, it doesn't really matter if you've gone over the edge. You kind of that's part of your style. But if you're very, very precise, then um, yeah, you can just keep being very precise. You're allowed to be. It's okay. <laughs> and if you're really, really loose and slapdash, a bit like me, I'm trying to be careful. But I'm I'm more of a a, a, a loose kind of painter watercolour painter but this is a very graphic -y kind of style isn't it so it's sort of requiring a little bit of care but then you know, and there's all sorts of other things you know so I mean if you know if you're living in California and it's a beautiful sunny day it's probably dry before you get it on the paper and <laughs> if you're in a cold damp November day in England like I am then uh, <laughs> You can hope for it to stay wet a little bit longer. And I, know, I think I mentioned before once, you know, when I remember going out at dawn in the winter a long time ago when I was young, wanting to paint the dawn in a very romantic, artistic kind of way. And the, uh, the brush just stuck to the, <laughs> to the paper as it froze. So, you know, all your conditions all have an effect on how, how the paint is going to operate. So I want it to look kind of nicely f flat and not... I don't want to see brush marks in there, really, but um, we might have to. So I'll get a bit more of that in there. And it's just constantly pushing and pulling and trying to make it all work somehow to get a bit more of that stronger colour in there and just keep <laughs> keep working. But you can, of course, very quickly and very easily overwork it. So I'm going to leave that now. And I'll come and get some really dark brown. I think this is burnt sepia, burnt something, burnt something burnt umber. Actually, to tell you the truth, I've hardly touched my paints this year at all. <laughs> it's been a, an interesting year. So, there, and that's a little bit of shade. So I added a touch of green in with the brown there. Probably been better with some blue. Yeah, if you had a bit of blue, that gives you that kind of more of a grey shade. And I'm going to use that in here as well I think just to keep that sort of muddy and let's get a good grey let's a good good shadowy grey in here so I'm gonna get this burnt umber and this is blue is French ultramarine and when you mix them that goes a bit blue so I'll add a bit more <laughs> bit more and then you get a bit more burnt umber and it gets a bit more grey so that looks pretty good and now I'm going to clean that brush again so you can tell if it's clean it just brushes clean and then here I'm going to paint clean water like that and then I'm going to get a little bit of this and so this is going to be shadow on the ground. Okay, all these baubles are going to be red. I mean, you can do them any colour. You can do them lots of different colours. 
whichever or however you want to do it <laughs> it's, it's your picture is your picture but I'm going to do these red so this is a scarlet lake and I'm going to paint these like that leaving a little bit of white for shininess like that and then again I want to be dropping in while these are wet so I'm going to probably not work my way all the way down to the bottom to start off with but I'll suddenly reach a point where I think mm. <laughs> I need to get in there with some more so I'm going to be dropping in a darker shade of red, a crimson And now here, where I've painted over it, I can sort of pull some of that green away so it's not quite so hard edged. But then that's going to, you know, here, I'm just working it in, but it works it into the, the red, which you might not really want. And I think I'm just do these two here and then I'm going to work a bit more darker red into all of these ones I've done already. So I'm going to get this here, which is a crimson. And I'm going to put this in pretty much neat straight from the pan. And just down here, kind of seven and eight o'clock. And you can see that's just sort of making it pop, giving it a bit of shadow or it's not really shadow it's just a sort of more intense color on this side and i'm sort of half inclined to put some shadow in but I, i'm not sure i really want to I, I think you know i could have little shadows under each of these baubles but Something's telling me not to. I think that would kind of be some <laughs> one move too far. So now I'll clean that and I'll come back to that original red. And then we'll do the rest of the baubles. Oh, that's gone very blobby. Brush not behaving itself. Oh, bad workman blames their tools, don't they? It's probably me not <laughs> working the brush properly is more to the point yeah so I'm up in the attic <laughs> later this week getting all the Christmas stuff down I think we had a bit of a cull a couple of years ago because over the years you collect up all this stuff don't you and, um, and each year we always buy one new bauble I can't think that we have actually this year um, I don't think we've got a new one. Maybe. Oh, I'll have to. I can't remember. <laughs> I think. Oh, no. So we have some interesting ones. Like we've got a Las Vegas sign. <laughs> um, we got lots of things from holidays. We've got Notre Dame in Paris and something from Rome. And <laughs> Canada, yeah, we got sort of black bears from Canada, I think, doing interesting things, Christmassy things. And uh, we got a a, a, a rocket, <laughs> those kind of marching girls from New York, from the, um, whatever it is, the big show, big Christmas show, I can't remember now. <laughs> we went round, we went round it in New York and let's come to there and so I'm going to draw that little bit around there and when I come to next level I'm just going to leave a little bit of white there just on the edge which helps to give a kind of thickness to the pot and then I'm going to come back to this crimson again and I'm going to put some in there so this is 
much almost neat straight from the pan and I'll bring that in there like that so that's almost drawing isn't it there's that whole argument about whether watercolor is painting or if it's drawing <laughs> I'm going to just put a bit of red over that because it's a funny colour, that green, it's gone green and so I want it to be look a bit darker. There you go. I could put some little bit of shade in under there but I don't want it to look too whoop, dark. That's sort of now starting to get a painterly brushy look about it which I don't really want but we're almost there I think so what I'm going to do is mix a bit of mix a bit of the crimson in with the red so we get a nice Christmassy red you see the, that that the scarlet is too scarlet and the crimson is too crimson so what I'm going to try and do here is um, to sort of paint around these and see how it goes. There's one thing about this is that while you're doing it, you are so close um, to it, and you, you know, you keep going, oh, that's wrong. Oh, I made a mistake there. Oh, that's not right. Um, and it's because you're so close to it. If you were to give this card to somebody, they wouldn't see any of the mistakes. It's only because you're so close to them. And they will just be so amazed that you've taken the time to make a card for them that um, they will just be thrilled and they suddenly won't be going, oh, we made a mistake there. <laughs> so it's, it's only you being the critic. And, you know, we are our own worst critics as artists because we are just so close to it. That's where it's going. And then you know, the best thing you can do is to, when you've done your bit of work, whatever it is, is just to put it away for a little while and come back to it and you just have that little bit of distance and you go, oh no, 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 it's actually not that bad, it's oh, actually it's quite good. So, um, that's my two penneth, that's my Christmas gift to you. <laughs> just, just chill out, right? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So we come all the way around and around into there. And there. Now you might like to put a little bit more shadow in there. Just make that a bit more definite. Just a little bit like that. And then I'm just going to soften the edge with clean water like that. And again, I think if you've got that shadow, I think maybe we need something a little bit more obvious. But that's just too obvious. You see, oh, once you start, you know, you have to keep going. And then it's, oh, dear. <laughs> there we go. And now I'm going to try standing it up. There, that's a fun Christmas card. Thanks for watching and subscribing so you can come back to the Shoe Render Drawing channel and do lots more drawing. Bye.